Yo. What? It's your boy. It's me. Really me. Not a lookalike. I know some sound alike, but when I'm around a the mic, they cut. You know the script. Dell the ultimate. Rapper International with the rational style. I get the shit off my consciousness then. Put off my compasses. I'm on some shit you ain't around. In your town, clown. Rebound. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, point sword heaven if you know who I was just rapping there. I actually said his name in the rap. Um, it's your boy. I'm back. You know what I'm saying? We're doing it. Look at me. Alive. And I say look at me because I decided to start uh, recording this thing on uh, on video. Putting this on YouTube. Um, I wanted to do it eventually, but I also wanted to just get some episodes under my belt. Um, you know, get things rolling properly. And so I th- I'm pretty sure this is episode 10. I don't know. I've now lost count because the last couple weeks of my life has been... You know, not really a thing that I know what the fuck was going on. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or anything, you saw that I was sick as fuck. Um, I wasn't really posting selfies a lot, but your boy was ill. Um, but I've been wanting to get uh, this eventually on YouTube. That was always the plan. Obviously, everybody's doing video shit these days. So maybe we can clip this up, put some shit on the Internet, pop like I should be popping already, you know. It's you. We got You guys know me. I'm. I'm trying to trying to elevate myself in every way, and uh, this is the next step. So obviously, putting a podcast out was uh, was a goal, and then also putting it in video format. So if you guys enjoy doing that, I know a lot of you've been DMing me saying, "Put this shit on on YouTube." Blah blah blah. I got a decent following on there. So if you're watching now on YouTube, I appreciate you guys fucking with me from the videos I've been posting. And um, yeah, fucking comment fucking hate speech in the comment section i know how this app works um but yeah and also if you're watching you see me i'm this this is the crib i'm at the spot you guys can see my living room area this is the corner of the couch that i'll be posted on watching a gang of shit um i know a lot of people when they do um you know podcast studios and shit like that they have a lot of stuff in the background or whatever like that i have a painting above me it's the oasis album cover uh that's autographed by the entire band pretty fucking cool if you were a cool enough kid in the mid to late 90s to understand the importance of Liam and Noel Gallagher but um you can't actually see that because it cut off from the frame so I wanted to make sure that you guys know I was cool so I just literally took this album that I have um in in my in my bedroom took it out here it's uh Vince Staples album from last year uh Ramona Park broke my heart It is the best album of last year, of 2022, in my opinion. Um, Also, my best friend from growing up, Gabe Goldstein. Shout out to my guy. Also gave him his first and last name. So don't don't look him up too harshly and and anything like that. I don't think he's really got a social media presence like me. But either way, he he actually gifted me that for uh, my birthday last year because he knew I fucking loved that album. And that's the homie. And he understands the importance of good music. And I haven't, I've still got the shit wrapped up. I haven't even opened it because I appreciate it and I want it to age well. And I know that I don't have uh, an album player right now, a record player. So just know that I love you, Gabe. This is one of the best gifts I've ever had. Um, so that's the only thing. I brought this out here to make it look like I have something on my head. Just put it on my couch. Just sit it to the left of me, an actual unopened album, vinyl. That's who I am. But you guys, I'm back. I appreciate all the kind words. A lot of people hit me up. They're like, what the fuck's going on? Um, I was sick as shit. I was sick as shit. I um, I don't even know how to break it down, really. But like a week and a half ago now, um, my brother actually came to town. Shout out to Johnny Boy. And um, he came on like Tuesday or something like that. It was like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was a trip. Tuesday we went to the show. Everything was fine, but you know how you're kind of feeling like you're lagging? Um, and then Tuesday and then Wednesday pops up and I've got a cold sore on my lip. And if any of you guys are sexually active, you know that's a tough look at any age. Now, I've had cold sores before. Um I uh, had them when I was growing up and shit like that. It's not an a unnatural thing. If you look up cold sores and you Google it, you realize that it is definitely 
herpes simplex one or some shit like that. And you know what? Upon further research, about 80 to 90 percent of people actually have that. So it's not that weird. Cold sores are a thing. Um, but I, but also like I'm in a n- newer relationship with a chick. Tough look. W- what's going on? What's happening right now? Um, she was cool as fuck about it. Obviously, she understands uh, that's uh, a part of nature. Um, but either way, you guys know it's like stigma. It's like the it's 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 the worst look. First of all, it's right on the fucking middle of your face. I'm sitting here like, what the fuck's going on? But it's called a cold sore or a fever blister. Actually, I remember calling them fever blisters growing up um, because you typically like you're about to get sick or something like that. Well, so Wednesday, my brother and I go to the Dodger game and I'm I'm a baseball guy. I like Dodger Stadium, all that stuff. We're having a, a beer. I couldn't really drink that much. I had a beer here, beer there. I was kind of dragging. I was just dragging. And um, but I'm usually somebody that just kind of fucking shakes shit off, whatever. I just thought that I was just not feeling that good. Well, I by the end of the night it was like ten something, and I was like, dude, I gotta go home. I'm just not feeling it. And uh, you and not that's not a typical thing. Me and me and John always try to. We don't go super hard, but we you know I'll, I'll drink. I'll, I'll close the bar down if I need to. And um, so either way, I go back home that night, and I have like the fucking the shakes, dude. Like the the cold. When you're like super cold and then you're super hot and then you're fucking like just one of those worst fevers in the world. Fucking horrible, horrible shit. And but I just thought it was just that. So I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, I'm like, oh, fever blister. I got a fever. These are normal things, right? So that's all that is. Thursday comes around. I'm still feeling like shit. I'm um I'm canceling some sh- shows and shit like that. I'm really, I am legitimately sick at this point. Like, um, you know, not to get too graphic, but the poop wasn't solid. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully nobody's eating out there. But um, it was, you know, dysentery Gary. And I'm get, yeah, just sick. You're just fucking sick. But I don't know. You're, you're just, I'm just a dude. I'm fucking not thinking anything ever really. It's Thursday, Friday comes around. I'm still pretty fucking sick. And um you know, whatever I got like the fever blisters doing its thing. You it's going down. Everything's like it is what it is. But then my is Friday or like Saturday, my tongue starts fucking feeling funky. And in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You are you're like breaking down every everything. Once once your mouth is involved and you've got like some lesions going on you're like dude what sexual escapades have have occurred in my life that would potentially lead to this you're googling things you're looking up shit on the internet you're like what the fuck is going on my tongue at this point is like got like a white coat over it but it's like spots that are like enlarged not like i don't know how to say it because it wasn't like a swollen tongue but like there's spots that it like because i've seen strep throat but it's like white over my tongue a little bit like strep throat and uh, but it wasn't, it didn't feel like strep throat. I could like, it was like your, my throat wasn't sore, right? Like I've had strep throat before and it just didn't feel like strep throat. My tongue was like inflamed though. It felt fucking like crazy by Saturday. It felt like crazy. And so then Sunday comes around and I'm like, it's, it's worse than it ever been. I can't like Friday, Saturday and leading into Sunday. I literally couldn't, I couldn't swallow anything. And I couldn't talk without like real pain. Like I, the only way I would describe it is like if somebody like fu- put put like a fucking flame to your tongue. It was like hot like that. Like if I talk too much or if I uh, like tease. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> or S's. They're, they're, we're done. We're done. And uh, couldn't do it. And so um, and then even like I'm telling you, swallowing water was fucking horrible. And so I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm playing fucking doctor on the internet. It looks horrible. There were some things that popped up where I'm like, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, what What the fuck's going on? So one thing that popped up was called oral thrush. I thought it was this thing called oral thrush. But I looked into it, and it was it said that you have to have a weakened immune system to get oral thrush. Only babies get the shit. And I'm like, that ain't me, dog. That ain't me. So I finally go to the doctor Sunday. And this dude is looking at all my shit. And he's like, what the fuck is going on, dude? What's happening? He finally breaks it all down. 
and he lets me know that I've been attacked at all angles. So, it, and it is oral thrush. And if, right when he said oral thrush, I'm sitting here like, do I have a weakened immune system? Because then I look up what weakened immune system is. I'm like, dude, I have full blown AIDS. You just hit me straight, Doc. If I've got, if I got the HIV, dude, am I magic? Am I him? It is LA. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me if I got full blown AIDS, dude. FBA, dude. Full blown. That's what I was like. I don't know because if I have thrush, then that means I have weakened immune system. He finally breaks it down. The and the doctors. It was I fucking usually hate like going to the doctor and shit like that, but Daddy needed clarity. And he finally he he let me know pretty much what was happening was I've never had my tonsils removed, so I had sometimes I don't it happens every once in a while, but it never has happened this bad. But I, I guess I had like inflammation in the tonsils or like let's call it like I don't know tonsillitis or something like that. Like I had something going on with my tonsils, so they were inflamed. So what was happening was me, my immune system was attacking that. They were trying to hold hold down my tonsils. They're holding it down. They're fucking, you know what I'm saying? They're Jon Snow on my back tonsils. They're fucking North Wall on my shit, dude. They're protecting your boy. And um, and so while the immune system is attacking that and trying to handle that, everything else is, is weakened. So my immune system elsewhere is weakened. And because of that, then the oral thrush pops into my life. And, dude, I'm all I'm saying about this oral thrush is it, is the exact opposite of a royal flush. I'll tell you that. I've never had a royal flush, but you can imagine. That's probably pretty neat. One of the most ecstatic moments of your life. This was the exact opposite of that. Picture a 180 of a royal flush. It's called an oral thrush. And it was so bad. I, I'm telling you, I couldn't eat for six days. I didn't eat a fucking thing. I had like bites of yogurt because I thought yogurt would be cool. Not cool. Very unshielded, probably because there was fruit in there and it was citrus or something like that. I don't know what the fuck I was doing, but that hurt like a motherfucker. Yoga hurt. Chobani wasn't vibing with your boy. Chobani always vibes, dude. Greek yogi, not for me. And um, what else did I try? I tried like a smoothie, like a fruit smoothie. I guess fruit, maybe fruit was the stupid thing I did because it, ha- it does have sugar in it. It's like natural sugar. You guys know I've I got the internet. Um, what else fucking hurt? I mean, first of all, the fact that water hurt. Your boy couldn't even drink water without, like, real pain. Real pain. And so, yeah, but he finally he let me know it was, it was that. It was oral thrush. Babies get it, I guess. But then I talked to some other people, and they were saying that they've had some homies get it that have had inflamed tonsils before. So I guess it kind of, I don't know if that is a theme. That was, somebody did say that to me, and that made me feel good. You know when you just get clarity and you just feel better? He hit me with some fucking antibiotics, and since then, that was last Sunday. I'm recording this here on Monday. And so it has been a week of antibiotics, popping a pill. Actually, I got to take a pill uh, after I get off this thing. Um, doing shit. It's, it's doing some mouthwash shit. And it's been literally, I probably didn't, I didn't swallow food until like, the, like four, three days ago. Tell, I'm telling you, swallow like eating a meal, and it hurt until probably two days ago. It's been the fucking worst. I wouldn't wish this on my fucking mortal enemies. Oh no, I probably th- honestly no. Now that I know, this is what I would wish on my enemies. That that'd be, that'd be a better way to say it. <laughs> this is exact. Oh, yeah? You're fucking with me, dude? Well, how about this oral thrush, doggy? Why don't you fucking get hit with that, dude? Get finessed, dog. You ain't eating for a fucking week, and you're going to think you got fucking full-blown AIDS for a couple days, dude, when you do research on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Fucking loser. I That that might be actually a great. That's a great thing to, to attack my enemies with. But it was so bad, dude, and... um. I'm just so happy to be back. Um, I'm so, I don't know if you were listening to this thinking that you were about to get fucking Dr. Oz up in this bitch, but um, MD Turner is in the building, and that was that was my last fucking. It, it probably la- it, up until today, it still is hap- like the tip of my tongue is still like numb. If that makes sense, it's like you know how your tongue you can 
feel things out in your mouth like you could like with your tongue you can kind of get food out if it's stuck in your tooth and shit like that my tongue is still not like nimble like that it's still got a little bit of numbness on the tip of it once this is gone your boy's back but i was looking at my tongue earlier in the in the mirror dude i was like dude there it is there's my boy and if you've seen me do stand up pretty fucking silver tongued assassin this thing was bronze all week if that i don't even think it was meddling it was fucking, oh. So it's nice to have my tongue back. I admired it for like five minutes earlier today. My mouth is back. I uh, I had to fucking cancel a show at the. If you're listening in Arizona, I would. You guys know I was fucking hyped for this show. Headlining Tempe Improv? You kidding me? Historic venue, a, a venue that matters to me. I fucking had to cancel the fucking show. I was so pissed. Luckily, my boy Pete Lee stepped in, and uh, he's a nice, good Midwest boy. Also a silver-tongued assassin. Very sharp. So I heard the show was still good, but, man, this shit sucked. This whole week sucked. I canceled, like, I didn't do comedy for, so yesterday was Sunday, and the the last time I did a show was two Tuesdays before that. So, like, what is that, 12 days or something like that? I've been doing comedy for 11 years. I think that's like the longest I've ever taken off from doing, telling a joke on stage. I just did it last night. I did my first show. I did 30 minutes. Talk about going fucking zero to a hundred. That was a lot. I was, there was multiple times on stage. I was like, do, do I have jokes? Am I funny? Internally, this is me saying this. I think I did all right. I don't know. People were laughing. Fuck them. Down in Long Beach. It's a good time. Harvell's. Shout out to you guys. But, yeah, I'm just happy to be back, happy to be, like, fucking, I don't know. It's been uh, it's been a crazy stretch, and um, I appreciate you guys all fucking showing love, and some people were DMing me and hoping I got got back to health. I appreciate me being in, in your thoughts. Um, uh, the, you know, a lot of people hit you up when you're sick, too. And also, like, I hate having to, like, publicly say shit like that, but the way that we, that I do, that I operate, that I do shit, I'm... You know, I'm a, I, I hate to fucking say I'm a public figure, but like I had uh, to, had to cancel real things. I had to cancel a Hollywood improv show. I had to cancel a Tempe improv show. I had to cancel a couple other shows and get coverage there. So like I did have to fucking announce that I was sick. It was weird. And then you're like, yeah, I couldn't even fucking talk. So then I said that in the post and then people are like, are you good, dog? Are you dying? A lot of people, also a lot of people just hit you hit you up trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of people are just nosy. They, they they act like they're not trying to figure out what's going on, which I would much rather you be like, what's going on? What is the illness? I'd love to know. I'm a nosy person. But some of them are trying to be like, they're just vague about it. Like, well, you know, if it's this, then you should probably do this or something like that. It's like, bitch, it ain't that. And, you, and I know you just hit me up because you want to know what the fuck's going on so you can talk shit about me behind my back while I'm sitting at the fucking crib trying to fucking get back to right. Let me heal. Let me heal. Motherfuckers. There's people like that. Then there's people that actually like think that they found medical information that is going to help you. Cause, and also, I wasn't like trying to hide anything from people, but I wasn't trying to like get into a whole back and forth with everybody about what's going on with my fucking mouth. But um, I there's definitely some people like... I know some some younger chick that's a fan of mine out here. She was hitting me up. She was like, you know, if honestly, if you just get if I was you moving forward, I would get a tongue scraper and I would do this, uh, this type of mouthwash and do this. And this. it's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Thank you for your support, though, if you're listening and everything like that, if you know who I'm referring to. But uh, but shut the fuck up. Don't tell don't you are in your early 20s. And you just did the same thing I did the last four days. Do a little bit of internet research and try to... You're trying to tell me what the fuck I should be doing? Okay. I'm a 36-year-old moron. You think I'm going to listen to you? No. God forbid. You know, you just got people that think... What, the best advice I got actually was somebody was like, I heard whiskey helps. And I was like, honestly, I appreciate, I appreciate your candor. And I appreciate that. Um... I didn't drink any whiskey, but that did seem like something that could have helped. It would have at least numbed the tongue. Something like that. And then there's people that actually really genuinely care. There's people that are in your life that truly, truly care about your well-being. Like my mother. 
And uh, every time she told me anything, I'd internally be like, shut the fuck up. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's the only, <laughs> like the first three days I was sick, she was like, you should go to the doctor. And I was like, I'm not going to the doctor. And she was like, you know, if you should go to the doctor. Eventually, by Sunday, she was right. But it takes her 72 hours to be correct in my mind. I don't know if that's how your parents work in your, when they give you advice, immediately they're wrong. And then they're wrong for two more days. And then by the third day, you're like, yeah, they might be right. They could have been correct this whole time. Because I definitely wish I would have gone to the doctor a couple of days earlier. That was the the best thing they could have done. And by Sunday, I finally went to the doctor. And you know what? It wasn't full-blown AIDS. That's a big win. Um, but you get the clarity. That you, like the doctor's visit was that was the best doctor's visit I ever had. I'll never forget. Uh, he, he, I don't know. What he, I don't remember what he looks like. I don't know his name. But I almost want to pull up on him and just hug him. Just be like, thank you, dog. Like, you're a real one. And you're do, you're out here doing doing the Lord's work, but I um speaking of speaking of my mother also. It was her birthday yesterday, or no, two days ago, or something like that, June twenty fourth. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, Mimi Turner, I love you, and uh, I should listen to you earlier than seventy two hours after you give advice initially. Your mother was a nurse. You've got a lot of medical people in your family. You were in the medical field. I should probably defer to your knowledge on this. Um, but I am, as you know, because you raised me, one stubborn motherfucker. But I, I hope you had a happy birthday. And, uh, yeah, my mom is out here aging. She was 40 when I was born, so she's 40 years older than me, 36. She's 76. She's fucking out here doing the damn thing. She's lived a full-ass life. And she probably got a bunch more years to go because all this woman eats is broccoli and chicken. This woman's going to outlive all of us. Living to 114. Just fucking watching Jeopardy every day. You know, she might have it all squared away. So happy birthday to my mother. And uh, anybody out there listening that still has a mother that's alive, just text them. You know, tell them you love them. They're out there. They need it. But, um, yeah, man. But your boy has been, woo, your boy's back. That's big. That's really all that matters right now. Your boy is back. And a new lease on life. <clears throat> Midway through that that uh, that sickness, too. I don't know how you guys feel when you get sick, but I was like, dude, am I ever... What what was it like to be normal? You ever get that sick where you're like, what, <laughs> what was life before this? What did oatmeal with raisins in it and brown sugar even taste like before this? Because you better believe I thought I could eat oatmeal. Could not do that. Couldn't do that. Oatmeal? Fuck you. This this thing was... Cr- I couldn't eat a fucking thing. It's like the world was fucking teasing me, dude. But, um... I, um... Uh, like, the, dude, the last meal I had before I got all sick was a fucking Dodger dog. And it, honestly, that could have been the culprit. It could have been the Dodgers working against me. Fucking how's the Dodger dog? I haven't been right for ten days. What say you, doctor? Um, but yeah, I was so sick. I was fucking dying. And uh, if you're if you're watching this, and you're looking at the couch, this is the couch that I was posting it in. I was this is the corner pocket. Your boy is tucked in here sometimes, just fucking crushing NBA games, dude. I'll be deep in this corner. You ever had? You got that that corner in the couch where you're like, dude, this is this is where things. This is where most of my life happens. And um it's it's nice. This is actually pretty personal space you guys are looking into. Um I've watched many uh many a major league baseball game right here. Um I've watched the Suns collapse on national television against many a foe. Um I've crushed several seasons of The Wire, Mad Men and Sopranos right here. During the pandemic, dude, I was fucking posted up, dude. Just watching Breaking Bad for the third time. You know what I mean? Just being like, dude, honestly, Skylar was right all along. She was, you know, you you're in, in the in the second and third watch, this bitch might have been she might have been the moral high ground if you really analyze it differently. But I'll be a motherfucker if she wasn't the most annoying character in the world from the first time I watched that show. But she was she was you know, she was right. 
And then if you're really looking at it from, you know, this, in this corner, I had that, I had that realization right here. Um, you know, you're, you're sick of shit and you just got to fucking figure out what to do. Post up in this corner. Try to see, try to see what you can do. Fucking analyze your life a little differently. Check in with God. You know what I mean? Figure that one out. Uh, I, I crushed so many movies this week. I don't know if you guys are excited for that, but I have been just crushing movies. Uh, luckily, I got a, a great girlfriend that gave me a lot of support. A lot. Oh, that that's another point, too, is with relationships. You want to test some things, see how they deal with you when you're sick. This one, she's she, she might be a keeper, guys. It's pretty great. Very motherly. Very accommodating where I needed some help, things like that. Um, that was pretty neat. It's a good. It's good. Good to have that. You don't want fucking Nurse Ratchet up in this bitch. I'll tell you that right now. Somebody's like, get the fuck over it. You're acting like a little bitch. Okay. No, she was nice. It was good. If I needed something, I which also I didn't need much. I just needed. I needed people to not bother me. Is really what I wanted to do. But, you know, you can't go out. So you got a significant other that's kind of just stuck in the house chilling with you and luckily we both like just crushing movies and uh as you guys know i have immaculate taste in films and uh she's a little younger so i was like doing things like you never seen goodfellas what the fuck are we talking about also she was like initially she was like no i've seen goodfellas that's the one where the guy and then there's the there's the blonde girl and i was like blonde girl this no you have not seen this film at all no blonde women there's Jewish brunettes and fucking Irish and Italian motherfuckers and dead people. That's it. The only blonde bitch in this thing dies in a fucking pink Cadillac. That's all I know. But, yeah, so we, we just crushed movies this week, and it was great. It is great, like, knowing that somebody hasn't seen, like, Goodfellas, you're just like, why don't you just sit down? <laughs> why don't you just keep, I don't care if you're a uh, man or woman. That's this isn't like a this is a uh what is it an objective perspective objectively that's a great movie right that's like you know fucking sit down and fucking lock in check this one out see what the fuck you think but I was on a heater this week I was like you haven't seen this you haven't I, there was a lot of you haven't seen openings which and also like I knew she hadn't seen them you know cuz like you know Late mid late twenties, female in America. Like, I'm 36. We got we we were watching VHS stuff. You know, she's not like super young, but definitely like there's some movies that she just has. I remember when the USA Network was just fucking humming these things all the time. You know, fucking. I've watched. I'm 36. I'll tell you right now. If you're if you're of this age, if you're between 33 and like. 45 let's say in America and you were privileged enough in your youth to have access to cable TV you've seen Shawshank Redemption seven times and I'm not even saying you've sat down and watched I'm saying just flicking through the channels by the fact that it was constantly on some channel it was you've seen it seven times just by accident just even if it was at like two second intervals at a time, just flipping through channels. You've seen Shawshank. You've seen it all at one point or another collectively just because it's been on fucking TV the whole fucking time. We've seen we've seen movies millions of times in our generation. You know, I've seen Goodfellas. I don't even know how many times, but, you know, younger, younger people, you just, you know, it's different. You know, it's just a different uh, accessibility. We were, you know, we only had, which is crazy to say, hey, remember, hey, growing up, I only had 120 channels, okay? You fucking kids with your 1,001 fucking whatevers, you know? So, we, you know, we, we, we were watching, we consumed things at a different level. And I've seen Goodfellas, and I did a lot of that. I did the, you haven't seen this, you haven't seen that this week? And then, and also, you're sick, so I've got leverage. We've talked about this before. When who's who's positioning who? Who's suggesting what film? Stuff like that. Um, if you know, I'm sick. I'm vulnerable. 
come from a place of I'm begging for mercy. You know, I can't drink water, and you're going to tell me what I got to watch tonight? So at one point I did the You Haven't Seen That with Goodfellas, and then I knew she hadn't seen Heat. We talked about it in the past. And, uh, you know, one of those nights we had three hours to kill. You know? (laughs) Fucking lock in. It's fucking crazy movie. That's a crazy movie because you're like an hour and a half in or something, like almost two hours in, and you're like, they haven't even robbed the bank yet? Are you kidding me? This thing is about to fucking turn up, okay? Sizemore still breathing? (laughs) Oh, baby. Let's fucking go. To me, the action is the juice. You know what I mean? Shout out to fucking R.I.P. Tom Sizemore. But yeah, we watched so we watched a great amount of movies and, and just crushers. I, I I snuck Goodfellas in, Heat. Um, Heat is a fucking amazing movie. You guys know my perspective on that. If there's a fucking robbery scene in the city of Los Angeles within the first twenty minutes of the film, fucking sign me up, dude. I'm talking Heat. I'm talking Den of Thieves. I'm talking Ambulance. You seen that one with Jakey G? If you ha- if you haven't seen that one, fucking lock in, dude. It's Michael Bay also, and it's just him cooking. At no point does it make sense that this movie is even a thing, dude. Why? How would you be able to steal an ambulance and drive throughout L.A. for like fucking several hours? Are you kidding me? O.J. couldn't even do it in a white Bronco, and that was '94. You know what I mean? This fucking movie doesn't make any sense. And the whole time you're Jake Gyllenhaal, people are gonna figure it out, dude. Okay, but ambulance, dude. I'm telling you. Don't call me crazy till you've seen it. They robbed that bank within fucking... They're they're robbing a bank within 15, 17 minutes of the opening credits of the movie. I fucking love that shit. We watched uh, Heat, Goodfellas, what else? Oh, you know what also we watched? that This is before I got deathly ill. And I do remember this. Uh, but we've been on a nice tear with like kind of creepier movies a little bit. Or like movies that are kind of like... Um, I don't want to call them thrillers as much as like a little bit like psychological thrillers. How about that? And uh, we watched The Game by David Fincher's like second movie. It was the f- if you're a David Fincher guy, he was he directed The Game uh, Seven back in 1995, and I'm almost positive this is his second movie, or it was like the second movie that the studio gave him because he also did Alien Three, I think, or something like that. But um, the game, dude. Michael fucking Douglas. Also, every time I watch a Michael Douglas movie, I'm like, dude, is this my guy? Mikey Dougie? Dude, is this the fucking dude? I fucking love him. Loved him in Wall Street. Loved him in Wall Street too. Shout out to Shia LaBeouf. Fucking Mikey Dougs, dude. Every time I see him, he's just cooking at a different fucking level. Several fucking pans frying. You know what I mean? Like he's got like... Fucking, he's souffling over here. He's got the oven going. This guy is fucking cooking. The Game is a great fucking movie. Um, It's about, and it's got Sean Penn in it for like, barely like five scenes. Great. I love Sean Penn. Huge Sean Penn guy. Shout out to Sean Penn and Carlito's Way. One of the best fucking, worst characters ever. Best worst piece of shits ever. I fucking love that. Um, But The Game, dude. If you've never seen the game, check out the game. I think I watched it on Amazon Prime. It's fucking just a mind fuck of a movie. It's a it it's literally uh Sean Penn's his brother. They're wealthy beyond means. Like they're like, you know, it'd be like a modern day billionaire type dude. Um and he doesn't have a lot like a fucking there's a lot of monotony in his life and all that shit and his brother gifts him with this game. And then the movie just fucking goes. And it's like a game that's like a... It takes over your life type of thing. And it's fucking... Woo! It's a good one. Check that one out. It's a real feel-good movie. Um, But we were on that that kind of psychological thriller tip. A little bit more like heady type stuff. And so the other movie we watched, which... I don't know if this gets me uh, canceled or not. But uh, I did watch Match Point. And... um, you know, a lot of people out there might be like, oh, isn't that a Woody Allen movie? Yeah, it is. And that doesn't mean it's not a great fucking perfect film. And, uh, yeah, he definitely 
fucked his, uh, you know, stepdaughter or whatever. Um, uh, you know, and we're not going to hear, we're not here talking about, hey, I ain't judge and jury. <laughs> you know what I mean? In fact, there are judges and juries, and I think he's still out there um, operating in, in life. But, uh, you know, problematic dude. I've watched the documentaries. Pretty cringy stuff. Uh, not our best, not our best model American. Uh, well, that doesn't mean he didn't write and direct pretty good fucking movies. You know, um, I'm not going to sit here and break down everything that one Robert Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly did. But if the remix to Ignition came on, my feet are going to start moving. I might even start clapping. You know what I mean? I'll tell you right now, I have, I've been to a strip club in Portland, Oregon, where somebody, or there was a stripper on stage with angel wings on and somebody in front of her were singing, I, I believe I can fly at something called Stripper Oki in Portland, Oregon on a Monday. And I fucking had tears in my eyes. You know what I mean? That's that's the power of, of, of R. Kelly's music. Nah, he's a piece of shit. But, you know what I mean? Separate the man from the from the art is all I'm asking here. And Match Point is a crazy fucking movie. If I told you Woody Allen wasn't attached to it, just go watch it. You know what I mean? Fucking Scarlett Johansson, early Scar Joe, as hot as ever. Um, Jonathan Reese Myers, I think his name is, is the uh, main actor in it. That movie fucking goes. A, it's a pretty much about a dude that uh, is an ex-tennis player that uh, kind of falls into this family that is super wealthy. Brian Cox is in it. Shout out to Logan Roy. And he ends up falling in love with or having an affair with somebody that he shouldn't be having an affair with, which is, uh, which really gets things cooking. And then it just fucking goes. It's it's a it's a twister. It's a turner. It's a fucking boom boom boom, match point, hard vouch, hard vouch. It's, that might be one of my more problematic takes. I get what people are out there saying. You know, Woody Allen's a piece of shit. Well, you know, okay, go watch Match Point. He made some good things, you know. And also, I should look more into what he did. Is anything? Is it illegal? I don't know. I know he's a creepy dude. Shout out to. His, it seems like the girl that he's banging that was his stepdaughter. She's doing fine monetarily, at least. So maybe you know we should ask her what she thinks of all of it. Either way, I think I've said too much. But um, that <laughs> hard hard voucher match point, and then we're in the creepy, creepy, uh, not creepy. These aren't these aren't creepy movies. Woody Allen's creepy, but the film itself isn't creepy as much of it's like. Uh, just kind of those like crazy movies. It's a crazy movie. And so we're on that tip and we're sitting here in Los Angeles, California, and I'm finally feeling better. And there's a movie theater up the street, Beverly, uh, the Beverly Cinema, New Beverly Cinema, owned and operated by Quentin Tarantino. And they throw up a lot of old movies there. Or not that not a lot of old movies. It's just old movies, right? It's old. Any movie you could think of that is dope they'll put it in theaters so you can watch it in theaters right and uh, i love doing shit like that because you some movies should be seen in on the on a bigger screen and so you can go and see what's playing every day and stuff like that and so me and my girl were walking by it this past week and what's playing but the talented mr ripley and i was like oh shit have you seen this i did the have you seen this and uh she said no and I was like, are you down? And she said yes. Uh, which is also a great a big picture here, too, is being with somebody that likes to do things that you like. We both fucking love seeing movies. We love not only like watching movies on TV, but like going to movie theaters. And so she was down. Never do, I didn't even show her a preview. I was like, let's fucking do it. But if I needed to sell this movie, fucking, are you kidding me? Talented Mr. Rip, dude. Fucking Matt Damon coming right off Goodwill Hunting. Gwyneth Paltrow isn't even Gwyneth Paltrow yet, I don't think. I don't even know what movie she had made at this point. Um, Jude Law, just becoming Jude Law. Philip Seymour Hoffman, dude, PSH? Are you kidding me? Pre-heroin? What? Or he's probably balls deep in it then. I don't know. He might have been doing that pure, pure. <clears throat> back then but PSH 
Um, who else is in it? Kate Blanchett hadn't even like been like she wasn't even that bitch yet. What? And somebody else is in it too that I'm not thinking of. But fucking that. Just those five people right there. That's crazy. That's insane. And um but that's that's right in the line of kind of match pointy like somebody that that's that's actually how I to, what I told her too cuz we had just watched match point and I was like if you thought match point was good which she did um I thought I think you'll like the talented Mr. Rip and um seeing it in theaters was very cool seeing it in a sold out theater in Los Angeles at 2 p.m. on a weekday is very LA Cause you're in a theater with a bunch of people, and like I know what I do for a living. I'm a stand-up comedian. We work at night. But what the? Does anybody have a job in this fucking city? What's? Go, why are we all at a 2 p.m. movie? Why is this sold out? But um, it was really dope. It was cool to see it because like everybody in there pretty much had seen. Like I bet like 90 something percent of people had seen the movie before. Um, and then it was cool because my girl had not seen the movie before, so that was exciting. Cause she got to see it in front of a bunch of people that knew all the beats and all the anticipation was kind of gone for a lot of them. And she was still like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Um, but that was a cool experience. That would be something. If you come to LA, that is something that I would suggest <clears throat> is looking up like the new Beverly cinema is one example, but there's like five, six, seven theaters that all show like old movies. Some of them show old movies with like the director's, in the theater and they might even have like a and a and stuff like that. Those are cool experiences. I know they do that sometimes at draft house. There's a, my buddy actually is a part of a company called landmark theater. I want to say in Westwood, they do that shit there. Um, it's really cool. It's a cool experience, <clears throat> especially if you love movies. That's how movies should be seen is on the big screen. Talented Mr. Ripley isn't a big CGI movie. There's no CGI in it, right? Just cause it's, it's not Jurassic Park doesn't mean it shouldn't be seen in the big screens. Um, it was a cool experience. It was cool to see. It was also like funnier than I remember. I'd never seen it in theaters. So like people were laughing at things where I was like, I guess that is pretty fucking funny. Um, but the talented Mr. Rip did. <clears throat> that was a good one. But then also a lot of people were like, Oh, so you got to choose all the fucking movies. This week. We also, I watched the Catherine Heigl film. Okay. I watched the ugly truth with my boy, Gerard Butler. I prefer Gerard, in Den of Thieves. I'll be straight up with you. But I'll tell you right now. The Ugly Truth is pretty fucking good. And I remember I saw that in theaters with my father back in the day. Um, and uh, yeah. That movie holds up. And Katherine Heigl. It is. It, it, she was as hot as ever back in. What was that? Like 2000. What was that? 2005 or something like that? When was When was she the one? She was crushing it for a little bit. And she was great in those movies. I heard she's a monster of a person. And also, you know, I don't know if she did it for me. But that's always, I, <laughs> it's always so dumb to say that. Like, I don't know. I don't, she didn't really do it for me. But dude, if she was right next to me in bed in 2005. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't make noises like that. But you know what I'm saying. I'd fucking text her the fuck back. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys get what I mean. I would holler at her. A little smoother than that. But um, that doesn't take away from my point that she wasn't in my top. Heigl was never in my top five, five to ten. I prefer a brunette with darker eyes. I'm a Salma Hayek type. I am a Penelope Cruz boy. I'm an Ana de Armas guy. I'm a Sofia Vergara type boy. I like my girls a little spicier. You know? So, don't knock me. Because I got preferences. But we did watch The Ugly Truth. Fun movie. Good movie. Um, Nice little 90 minute hitter. You know, you gotta sneak in a rom-com every once in a while. The other thing that uh, was nice this week being deathly ill and it timed out well with my deathly illness was... I don't know if you guys are watching Sports Center out there, but the Cincinnati Reds went on a 12 game heater. And uh that was fucking fantastic. That was uh, uh you know, I've said it on here before. I am at my core 
some of my earliest memories of my entire life are at Riverfront Stadium watching Cincinnati Reds baseball. Um, I was fortunate enough to watch so many games down there, and then they turned into Great American Ballpark. I was able to watch. I've been to that ballpark so many damn times. I fucking love the Cincinnati Reds. And uh, But they are a team that has been wildly infuriating throughout most of my life. We'll have like these couple of years where it's like really cool, and then it's just so depressingly bad um, that it is – you almost lose all faith in them or you kind of like, you know, I, I watch, I'm one of those weirdos where I'll watch them even when they're bad because I just love, I, I don't know. It's my team, right? I'm never, I'm just, I don't even know what it's like to bail on a team. I don't get it when people talk about it, when they're like, you know, they've just been so bad so long. I fucking, I'm, I'm not a fan anymore. I'm, I don't know if it's a Cincinnati thing or if it's just me being Irish and, dealing with anything even as bad as it is i'll fucking tolerate it i'll tuck it away i won't talk about it and i'll let it fucking kill me of a heart attack at 57 (laughs) you know what i mean but i uh yeah i can't i can't bail on these guys and uh this year out of nowhere they're fucking as exciting as they've ever been in my whole life and they have been this exciting and like 1990 was super exciting, but I was four years old, right? Like, I don't remember that year. I was, I think I was actually technically three years old turning four that year, right? I don't have any true memory of that year. The 90s were great. Obviously, we had the Barry Larkins. We had the Reggie Sanders. We had a couple cool years. 1999 was probably as exciting as it ever was because that was the team that came together, played well, all that shit, good personalities, and they end up losing in the wild card. The fucking Al Leiter led Mets. Fuck Al Leiter. And in the 2000s, there were some teams that were really scrappy. They had the Joey Votto, Jay Bruce years, all that shit. Those were solid-ass teams. Brandon Phillips is one of my favorite Reds of all time. Johnny Cueto. You know, these things all matter to me. Edinson, Volquez, shit like that. Those 2010 to, like, 2014 years, those are all great. What is going on right now in Cincinnati is fucking crazy. They literally have five rookies that are playing lights out from this kid Abbott who's a lefty pitcher to like this kid McLean fucking and beyond all of them Ellie De La Cruz we have a dude on the Cincinnati Reds right now who is potentially like a generational great player and like I'm not even saying like he's gonna be like like the cool thing with Joey Votto was he won an MVP to me he's one of the greatest Hitters of all time. I'll stand by that always. I love Joey Votto, all this shit. But he wasn't every year he was like one of the great talents of the league. He could be dismissed out of conversations all the time, especially being a first baseman when Albert Pujols was a first baseman, right? Like Pujols was a better – he's a better player. He'll go down as a greater player than Joey Votto, unfortunately. I fucking hate him as a Cardinal. I always will. But that's just a true thing. Um, you know, a bunch of different first basemen were better than him in certain years of Joey Votto's career. Dude, we got a guy, Ellie De La Cruz, that might be like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's And, and it's hard to even say it because you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. But you're watching this dude and you're like, this is crazy. He's a 6'5 shortstop. He's a switch hitting power hitter. He's a fucking lightning fast, arguably the fastest dude in baseball right now already. He's had... Um, his from home plate to third base, he's ran faster than like anybody in the in major leagues this year. That's like a fact. That's on record. It's nuts. And so he came up to he's a rookie and he's only been in the league for I think fifteen, sixteen games when I'm as I'm recording this right now. And he already fucking hit for the cycle the other day. That shit's crazy. So it's just nuts what's going on in Cincinnati right now. Cincinnati is a city that deserves nice things when baseball is good in Cincinnati it's such a different city I fucking loved it I always loved it growing up I love when I come back and visit and the Reds are doing well it, the city is buzzing everybody's you're fucking you're in the produce section and you're like fucking what about those red legs though you know what I mean and uh it's just great I fucking love it I love that I have something to watch in the dog days of summer you know the b- basketball's done football's you know two months out or whatever it is and so all we got is baseball right now and my team is might not win the world series this year fuck they might not even win their division even though they have the talent to do it 
but they're exciting. They're as exciting as any baseball team um, that I've been able to watch in my entire life. And I fucking love it. Um, and I'm excited about it. And that was the best. That was literally the best thing for my illness. I'm literally sitting here fucking dying in this corner of the couch. And, but every day I got to watch for three, three and a half hours of fucking Cincinnati Reds play baseball. And a lot of the, I watched, I literally watched them win every fucking game. So I was dying and they were thriving and that was fucking nice. So if you're looking, I know a lot of people out there are like, why the fuck is he going on this rant about baseball and shit like that? I fucking love baseball. It's a beautiful fucking game. And um, if you're looking for a team to, like, get you back energized in baseball, or you've, like, been a fan in the past, or you don't know, you know, you just kind of lost interest, fucking check out the Reds. That's all I'll say. It's a, it's a fun team. They got young, exciting players. They got speed. And uh, I fucking love it. And Ellie De La Cruz. What a fucking name. Ellie De La Cruz. Um, so that's that's been dope. That was the best thing that happened during my illness. Um, and, uh, you know, that's been exciting. Also, the dog days of summer. I don't know if you, you're, we got ladies out there listening, but it's an exciting time for you guys, too. This is between, it's between baseball, or I'm sorry, it's between basketball just ended, and then football's like two, three months away. So it's like... We're in that tweener. We're in that little spot where, like, you know, your guy, your man, whoever you're fucking right now, they got no excuse but to hang out. They, you can't you call them out, dude. A Sunday, no. You don't have football. You can't bail on me. There's no NBA playoffs going on, shit like that. These dudes got no excuse but to hang out with you. This is your fucking time to thrive. Schedule full Saturdays to do shit. You know what I mean? Fucking Friday, Saturday, dinner nights, date nights, dude, fucking do it. He's got nothing going on. And, you know, I will say, if there's a guy out there that is not wanting to hang out with you or bailing on you because of baseball, that might mean that you've got trash pussy. And I think that that's something that you could you should consider, too. Cause, but I'll tell you right now, if there's a dude out there that's like, no can do tonight, sweetheart, can't do it. Hunter Green's on the bump. You know, I go, can't. Can't do it tonight. Clayton Kershaw's in town pitching. That might you you might have trash pussy. You might that might be a personal thing that you got to deal with on your end. If they're bailing on you because you know Joey Votto's in town, <laughs> it could be on you. That's a man in the mirror situation, and you might want to look at that because I I love baseball, but you know if you're trying to fuck, I ain't watching a baseball game instead. So. Somebody's bailing on you could, to watch baseball. You know that might be some that might be some internal dialogue you gotta you gotta have with yourself, sweetheart. And um, that's just <laughs> some sage advice from a guy that's spun around this this old son about thirty six times. You know, and just got some perspective along the way. So, with that, <laughs> your boy's back. Your boy's back healthy. I'm doing comedy again. I'm still pretty funny. I hopefully get funnier. I got to do another show tonight. Um, I appreciate you guys fucking being patient with me. Anybody that that didn't see me in uh, Tempe, um, I appreciate you guys fuck with me. I'll be back in Arizona in October. I'm already in the process of lining up that date. So we'll figure that out. Um, we'll get something back on the books for that for sure. Um, if you're up in Colorado, I am there at the end of July. And then Austin, Texas. If you're any Texas boys listening to me right now, July 11th through July 18th, your boy's chilling. Let's fucking hook them, baby. Let's break down the fucking 1998 Texas Longhorns running back team. Fucking Priest Holmes, Ricky Williams, quarterback Major Applewhite. You kidding me? I think you guys beat Nebraska in the Big 12 championship back when it was like the Big 8, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Let's fucking, let's fucking talk about it. You know what I mean? So Texas, I'll be there, and then Fort Collins, Colorado, I'll be there uh, end of July. Um, got some other things in the works. Hopefully, I'll be announcing sooner than later for the fall. Um, I'm excited about it. So, uh, but yeah, I appreciate you guys. Fuck with me if you're watching this on YouTube. Comment, fucking share this with some people. If you're listening to this wherever you're listening to it, um, definitely rate it, review it, all that good shit. Uh, keep sharing it with some people. And uh, I appreciate you guys always. 
I'll be back next week. Holla.